Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you? Welcome to Adult Education Ingredient. My name is Rosaria. Well, guess what I'm going to bring you today? Today, the topic is called How much do you know about cognitive theory and cognitive learning strategies? Today, the research and findings were done by Friendly in 1993. So, cognitive theory plays a crucial role in adult education. So, what, for example, what to consider when you're thinking of printing the program for adult education, and types of students participate in the learning, and what sort of activity and tasks that you need to plan for the students who have different uh, degree of information processing, and what, how much, and how. What do you know about information processing? So for awesome suggestions and advices, put me through the link below as I will bring you awesome insights into what you need for your profession and your organization. Okay, I'm going today actually I'm going to divide the topics into five parts. The first one is the global and analytical learners, and the second one is about the um uh, the multisensory and the point of intervention approaches, side of perceptual modality, and the third one I'm going to focus on the three domain of educational objectives, and the fourth one I'm going to focus on the learning style instruments, and the fifth one is the, um, the of course, the uh, cognitive uh, apprenticeships. Okay, what do you mean by cognitive apprenticeship? Okay, I'm going to go to into detail in each one of them. So first of all, we focus on the global and analytical learners. So according to Friendly, the global uh, analytical learners, uh, global learners, has the ability to take in the information as a whole, uh, simultaneously, and also they, uh, they have the ability uh, ability to take the information in, uh, in a deductive manner in. Con also concretely and uh, um, subjectively. Okay. In another word, um, the analytical learners um, is opposite. An analytical learner able to take the information in as a discrete part, uh, sequentially, uh, also objectively, abstractly, you know, etc. Okay. This is the, that they are the difference between the global and analytical learner working opposite way. And now. What should the educator do with them? So according to Friendly, the study that I'm focused on now, that the educators, educators should first of all to separate the learners into two different groups. So after classifying them into the separate groups, uh, it's time for them to work on the, uh, the strengths of the information processing skills that each type of learners process. And also to check into which processing skills uh, the learners is um, at the moment, uh, at the moment to double check it, and also the uh, third one is find ways to teach and need the, the, the need of global and analytical skills, and the third one is to match the teaching tasks and the structures to the students' information processing on um, their strengths. Okay, the strengths of information processing, and the fifth one finally is to re-examine the teaching plans. Um, Frequently to see if the practice uh, is still reflects the global and analy analytical information processing skills. So the second one we are going to focus on is the perception modalities for the uh, multisensory and intervention and um, point of intervention approaches, of course. So now we need to understand what do you mean by perception modalities. So, perception modalities is a very important initiation aspect of cognition to attain to if um, in educating adults. So, there are two strategies of perception modalities, which I'm talking about before, which is a multisensory and the point of intervention approaches. So, these uh, 
strategies is used for in the learning setting to individualize instruction for the participants. First of all, we are going to focus on the multi-sensory approach. The study was done by Wislot in 1993, cited by Frenely that is used that using the fire um, safety program. So the fire safety program is to emphasize the effectiveness of multi-sensory approach. Um, the fire safety program is used to see the uh, employee's reaction and uh, uh, to use the fire extinguisher when the actual fire broke out. And it is a good program to list the participant to uh, involved in the hands-on uh, activity or exercise in which they use the fire extinguisher in the actual fire. So there are some advantages of multi-sensory uh, approaches, especially for the facilitators. The facilitators get to use a variety of uh, teaching processes, activities and materials to meet the adults' different perceptual modalities. And also the um, uh, facilitators get to draw some various methods to meet the participants' needs. For example, the vertical information, for example, the overhead projector, the video, and also the in interactive discussion on which types of fire, which types of fire and extinguisher, or what type of criteria has to be used, etc. So subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything as I bring you new topic. New topic, new insights, and new ingredients every Monday. Now we come to the second position modality, which is a point of intervention approach. It is a operate to a more in a more individualized approach, and the educator should, for example, identify the individual who uh, demonstrate difficulty in understanding the context the program is. And also, first of all, the um, educators should first of all to determine the preferred learning styles of the students who have similar characteristics, for example, using the video games for the students who have more strength in the perceptual side of the perceptual modalities. And also, facilitators get to use the individual perceptual um, modality profiles to develop several uh, individualized uh, strategies so as to achieve the common program objectives. Okay, secret. Now the third one, we come to the three domain of the uh, objective uh, educational objectives. So what do you mean by three domain of uh, educational objectives? So these are to do with emotion and the feelings. These are the domains which is affective, cognitive, and psychomotor domains. So these three domains are in the separate parts of the brain, brain which turns as triune brain. Well, the first one is the, uh, of course, the Aries brain, which has something to do with the psychomotor domain, which, which is um, in charge of the uh, our physical activity, the safetyness, and also the bodily function. Okay, the next brain of the triune brain, which is something to do with the uh, affective domain, which is uh, involved in the experience and. Uh, uh, expression and emotions and finally the latest brain which is termed as cognitive domain and which is in charge of the cognitive and the thinking which we can call cognitive and thinking brain now we can see the connection and similarities between the three domains and the triune brain and also uh, so according to Vero who studied um, the three domain of educational objectives uh, and cited by um, friendly that the emotion exhibited by the triune brain will impact on the um, the three domains, which is cognitive, affective, and psychomotor, as mentioned. So that is the emotion tied to the motion. So the use of kinesthetic strategies affects the affective domain. From here, how do we connect that to the educational objectives? So the educator should deal with the emotional baggage that uh, perspective that the uh, participant carry into the classroom. The tendency of many adults does down shift because of previous many of previous experience. So they actually they should um, let the they should inform the administrators, the supervisors, or the planners, and to stop uh, when they think they consider a way they can conduct their program because by moving away from the sites. 
uh, such as the traditional settings which trigger the negative response and that many inter interfere with the cognitive learning could be the first step in applying effective in applying the effective uh, cognitive theory okay so if you think the contents is good and you like the contents remember remember to put, uh, give a thumbs up and share it with your friend now we come to the fourth parts of my topic which is the learning style instrument what do you mean by learning style instrument so learners are in are different in the ways they perceive process and interpret store and um, record the stimuli so the learning style instruments are to suit various types of learners or participants so as to improve the learning so what is the relationship between the learning style and the learning style instruments First, we must understand that the learning style consists of the information processing, the affective and the um, physiological dimension. And also we need to determine uh, what is to measure and locate an, is an instrument to measure it. For example, uh, somebody say uh, prefer to work alone or somebody say prefer to work in a group. These are termed affective domain uh, affective dimension of learning style okay so what are the factors to um, select the instrument first to determine the needed use of the data collected from the learners using the instrument second to determine what instruments are available and also um, to match the intended purpose and number third, to evaluate and critique about the potential instruments. And finally, to an instrument is selected and utilized. There are some examples of uh, learning style instruments. For example, for information processing, according to friendly, it can be used to measure by the code learning style or grid code delineator style. And also you can Google it for modern style uh, learning instruments. They measure the different dimension of um, a learning style. And the second one I'm going to talk about is the affective dimension, which is also the uh, perception modalities. So the instrument style, uh, the instrument you can use to measure could be Bobby Meloni uh, or MMPALT2, and Google it for modern style instrument. Okay. And third one is uh, of course is physiological dimension also turn the personality the instrument that you can use to measure it is the R I mean <laughs> Gratia Regiment uh, can view a Maya split and also Google it for modern one modern instruments finally I'm going to talk about the cognitive apprenticeship what do you mean by cognitive apprenticeship okay cognitive apprenticeship is helps learner to learn to perform you defined complex and um, dangerous tasks so there, um, you can select. The, actually, sorry. Actually, there are some steps to select to for the um, um, cognitive apprenticeship. So first step is to, of course, to select the particular type of weak word task or the problematic situation. It should be something to do with the learners um, frequently encountered in the real world. And the second step is to arrange for modeling. What do you mean by that? It means that you need to model by the expert in the field of adult education, someone who knows what, what, how, when, and why about the situation. And the third step is to arrange or provide coaching. And the third step is to arrange for scout folding. Here, it is normally controlled by degrees of the challenging learning tasks um, and the learning environments. Okay, so. For example, if you choose the learning environments, you need to, um, you should, like, likely to, to know that the, this task, this should be successful. Okay, should be successful with the appropriate model, with appropriate assistance and coaching, and provided to the student as needed. And also, you need to help students to um, recognize the critical skills, uh, critical skills and knowledge. And also, you need to help students to uh, recognize and overcome the buggy thinking. 
Finally, we come to the advantages of cognitive apprenticeship. What are the advantages? So the first advantage, of course, is the students are taught by the knowledgeable and proficient uh, experts who know what, why, when and how. The second advantage is the task are in a realistic content. So what's shown and explained is our real thing, um, combining with the knowledge of, uh, of course, what, how, what, when and why. And the third advantage is the uh, cognitive apprenticeship, remember, is the primary method used to teach people how to perform the tasks that contain the elements of underlying phys physical skills or cognitive or thinking skills, problem-solving skills or inter uh, interactive skills, for example, like tri driver uh, education, sport training or flight training. That's all for my topic today. It's a long one. And also, for awesome suggestions and advice, put me to the link below. I will bring you awesome insight into what you need to know for your profession and your organization. And also, subscribe to my channel by hitting the button so you will not miss anything else. I will bring you new insight, new topic, and new ingredients every Monday. And if you like the contents, remember, remember to put a thumbs up and share it with your friend. So we come back to the conclusion. So in conclusion today, we learned that there are two types of uh, learners, which is global and analytical. We also learned that multisensory and uh, points of intervention approaches belongs to perception modalities and which are used to uh, in the learning setting to individualize the instruction for the participants. We also learned today the the three domain of educational objectives, which is affective domain, the um, cognitive domain, and the psychomotor domain. And also the learning style instruments are used different used for different types of uh, to measure the different types of learning style of the participants. And uh, remember the learning style uh, divided into information processing dimension affective dimension and also the physiological dimension. We also learned today that the cognitive apprenticeships um, are used to uh, measure the and help the adults to learn to perform the you defined complex and dangerous tasks. That's all for me today. Thank you for tuning in. Until next week and goodbye.